Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May June 2023, paper 4, variant 1. Today's lesson, we will start from question 9 and question 9 is about nuclear physics. We will also discuss question 10 and question 10 is about astronomy and cosmology. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of these topics and also you can have better understanding of these questions. In the previous videos we have already discussed from question 1 to question 8 and for the solution of those questions you can check the channel and you will find the solution of question 1 to question 8. Let's study together, let's improve together. Question 9 part A says define half-life. This is very common definition from nuclear physics so you need to understand how to define half-life in a proper way and this question has only one mark. Half-life simply we can say average time taken. Imagine that the activity of a sample is A and this activity after a certain period of time becomes half. So the average time taken for activity to become half this time we call is the half-life. We can also understand this one let's say we have n number of nuclei of any sample and after a certain period of time half of the nuclei they decay and time taken in this case that average time taken also is equal to half life we can also write on this one in terms of mass let's say we have mass of a sample is capital m and after a certain period of time half of the mass decays into an other element that time taken also is the half life means that average time taken that is also the half life so this is how we can define half life let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer for the answer of this question simply you need to write down average time taken for activity of sample to become half if you have written this one you will get one mark and this is b mark Part B says a sample contains n naught nuclei of carbon 11 and no other nuclei at time t is equal to 0. On figure 9.1 sketch the variation with time t of the number of nuclei of boron 11 in the sample. And half-life of carbon 11 is also given to us in part A. Half-life is equal to 20 minutes. So these informations are given to us. So in this case we need to understand we have initially n naught after one half-life we will have n naught by 2 and after another half-life we will have n naught by 4 and after another half-life we will have n naught by 8 and so on. So it simply means that when t is equal to 20 minutes we have this one at t is equal to 20 minutes we have n naught by 2 and at t is equal to 40 minutes we have n naught by 4 and at t is equal to 60 minutes we have n naught by 8 so simply first of all we have n naught by 2 so here we have n naught by 2 and then we have n naught by 4 so here we will have n naught by 4 and then we will have n naught by 8 so the half of this so we have 1 2 so it will be somewhere here then half of the remaining so we will have about this so first of all you can mark these points then simply we need to connect so this is how we can connect so very straightforward question but this is a kind of typical question you will see in many past papers about nuclear physics Part C says explain with reference to the random nature of radioactive decay why the activity of carbon-11 sample in B decreases with time. This is a pretty straightforward question. Let me explain you in a very simple way. For this one you need to understand that activity this is equal to minus we also use in front of lambda minus simply tells us that number of nuclei decrease with time. But most of the time in physics simply we write on A is equal to lambda n lambda here is decay constant so you need to understand the meaning of these symbols lambda is representing decay constant and this is the probability of decaying of a particular nucleus per unit time and each nuclei in the sample has the same probability to decay so lambda is a constant 
n is the number of nuclei remaining in the sample, sample or we can say number of undecayed nuclei so very important one to understand number of undecayed nuclei in the sample as time passes number of undecayed nuclei in the sample go down as this number of nuclei go down activity also go down because this is constant so these are the points you need to understand to answer this question let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer this is how you can write down your answer simply you can say every undecayed nucleus has the same probability of decay means lambda is constant for each nuclear so this is one point so we can say this one is one point fewer undecayed nuclei remaining with time so fewer decay so it means activity decrease mean as time passes number of undecayed nuclei decrease with time and activity depends on number of undecayed nuclei in the sample so activity also decreases with time i often used to tell student lambda is like a constant so this is decay constant we can also understand this one on this planet we have around 7 billion people and each person has the same probability to decay or we can say same probability to die so we don't know who will die next but everyone on the planet has the same probability to die second part says state with reasons whether a radiation detector placed near to the sample of carbon 11 indicates a major count rate from the sample that is less than the same as or greater than the activity of the sample so first of all we need to understand what is difference between count rate and activity so first of all let's try to understand the difference between count rate and activity count rate simply is the number of radiations we can say number of radiations detected by detector per unit time detected by detector we can simply say per unit time per unit time and activity is activity we can simply write on here activity activity is the total radiation total number of emitted radiations per unit time emitted radiations per unit time emitted radiations per unit time so this is in a simple way how we can define activity so activity is the number of radiations emitted total number of radiations emitted per unit time and measured count rate is the number of radiations detected by detector per unit time if we have this understanding i hope simply now you can say that count rate in this case has to be lower than activity so this is what we can infer from this if we have understanding what is activity and if we understand what is count rate now we need to understand why count rate is lower than activity in this case we have this sample so this is a piece of radioactive substance it will emit radiations in all possible directions so it will emit radiation this way 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 means in all possible directions it will emit radiations but the number of radiations emitted by the detector those radiations are only coming straight to this detector other radiation for example this one they will not be detected by detector these radiations also will not be detected by detector these radiations also will not be detected by detector so from here you can see that count rate has to be much less than activity and also when radiations are emitted some of the radiation they are absorbed by air and it is also possible some radiations are absorbed by the window of this detector and also this detector maybe it is not very efficient so it will have some dead time means in that short period of time this detector will not be able to record radiations so these are the reasons why count rate is lower than activity let me show you the answers so you can have better understanding and also you can write down your answer 
so these are the points you can mention in your answer for this question this question has three marks so you can write down any two of them one point you can say sample emits in all directions but detector only captures emissions in one direction as we have mentioned here some emissions are absorbed before reaching detector means they are absorbed by air some emissions are scattered within the sample we can also write down so this is third point simultaneous arrival of multiple particles only registers one I mean many particles they arrive together but this detector will count one so major count rate is less than activity we can also say maybe some radiations are absorbed by the window of detector or you can say GM2 so these points you need to understand and this question is also a common question in question 10 part A says state Hubble's law identify any symbols that you use Hubble's law is a very simple law. We can simply write down first of all Hubble's equation. V is equal to H naught T. H naught here is Hubble's constant. So this is Hubble's constant. Hubble's constant. So from here we can simply say that V is directly proportional to T. V is the speed of recession or we can say recessional speed so v is speed of recession so this is speed of recession and d distance of galaxy from the observer so this is distance of receding galaxy from observer galaxy from observer so these things you need to understand to answer this question so for this question simply we can say that speed is directly proportional to distance so if you write down this one you will get one mark and this is a mark mean it has to be in your answer otherwise you will not get a mark and speed speed is speed of recession and distance is the distance of galaxy from the observer if you write on these two points you will get two mark part b says a star of luminosity 3.8 times 10 to 31 watts is the distance of 1.8 times 10 to 24 meters from the earth calculate the radiant flux intensity at the earth of the radiation emitted by the star we need to calculate radiant flux intensity means we need to calculate f and in this case power luminosity means the total power emitted by the star is given to us we need to calculate flux intensity so simply for this question we need to understand that f is equal to l divided by 4 pi d square l is the luminosity this is the power emitted by the star we have power emitted by the star that is equal to 3.8 times 10 to 31 and here we have 4 pi and we have d squared the distance between star and our planet is given to us that distance is equal to 1.8 times 10 to 24 square now if we solve this one we will get our final answer that will be equal to 9.3 times 10 to minus 19 watts per square meter so it simply means that if we take one square meter one square meter area at the surface of our planet the power we will receive in one second that is equal to 9.3 times 10 to minus 19 because when this star as this is uh, emitting energy per unit time this energy will spread over this surface area as the distance get larger and larger energy per unit area will go on decreasing so intensity depends on distance but luminosity of the star means l the luminosity of the star this is intrinsic property of the star and it does not depend on distance so in this case energy first of all you can simply imagine it was closed in this area then it goes to this one then go to this one so energy spread over larger and larger area so the energy per unit area will go on decreasing as distance increase so intensity depends on distance but luminosity does not depend on distance so this is how you need to answer this question and this question has two marks first mark you will get c mark if you have written this equation and the second mark is the answer mark if you got the right answer you will get two marks 
part C says the star in B is in a distant galaxy. A spectral line in the light from this galaxy is known to have a wavelength of 486 nanometers. This spectral line in the light from the galaxy observed on the Earth has a wavelength of 492 nanometers. Explain why the wavelength observed on the Earth is different from the wavelength that the galaxy is known to have emitted. So in this case we have lambda emitted by the galaxy. So this one is lambda emitted. Lambda emitted is equal to 486 nanometers and lambda observe in this case we have that is equal to 492 nanometer. So in this case lambda observe this is greater than lambda emitted so it simply means that it is red shift means the light is red shifted and red shifted means that moving away so galaxy is moving away from our planet so this is moving away so these are the points you need to understand so you need to understand these two points lambda is greater so it means the light is red shifted from the galaxy so it means galaxy is moving away so these two points you have to mention for the first part so in our answer we can write down these two points we can say galaxy is moving away from the earth wavelength of light then we need to explain why so here we are explaining why wavelength of light from the galaxy increased by the doppler effect or we can say it is due to red shift so you will get two marks for the second part we need to determine value for the hubble constant and we understand hubble equation means v is equal to h naught d but value of d already was given to us in part b so if we can have value of v we can calculate h naught so h naught simply is equal to v divided by d v is the speed of galaxy in order to calculate speed of galaxy we can use delta lambda by lambda this is equal to v divided by c lambda is the change in wavelength change in wavelength in this case wavelength increased so we have will be writing here lambda observe minus lambda emitted lambda emitted divided by lambda emitted emitted means the lambda of light emitted by galaxy so here we have v we need to calculate v and c is a constant it has constant value now from here if we simply plug in values we will plug in values here so we can write on lambda observed this is lambda observed this is lambda emitted so we can write on 492 minus we have 486 and here we have v and this is divided by 486 lambda emitted divided by c c is equal to 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second if we solve this one we will get value of v value of v in this case will be equal to 3.7 times 10 to 6 meters per second so we have value of v simply we can plug in here we have 3.7 times 10 to 6 meters per second divided by value of d value of d was given to us 1.8 times 10 to 24 and if we solve this one we can find out value of hubble's constant so here we will get our value of hubble's constant our constant in this case will be equal to 2.1 times 10 to negative 18 and the unit of this one is per second so we can write on this is 2.1 times 10 to minus 18 per second so this is how we can calculate this question and this question has three marks means this is the answer for this question the first mark you will get if you have got the right value of the v you will get one c mark and the second c mark you will get if you have written this equation and the third is the answer mark if you have got the right answer you will get three marks so that's all for this question i hope this video was helpful and you have better understanding of astronomy and cosmology and also i hope you have better understanding of this whole paper if you are watching all the questions from this paper if this video was helpful
please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important and also if you have any questions please leave your questions in comments i will try to answer as soon as possible see you in next video